Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I'm very excited about this conversation because we have a young woman who's very dear to my heart and I really appreciate the work that she does. She's a writer, she's a TV host, TV producer, a content creator in general. And from time to time, she hosts a show on Instagram talking about how to be single. Her name is Omotayo Adiola and she is our guest today on Hello Nigeria. Good to have you, Omotayo. Good to be here. Thank Hello, you for having Omotayo. me. Hi. Hi. You look like sunshine. Oh my gosh. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> You do too many things. You're a TV presenter, TV producer, a writer. You've it's in, it's all in one. It sounds like wash, but literally, if you are writing the same show, producing the same show, and hosting on the same show, it's one job. Wow, I see. Oh. But that's not always how it works. Yeah. Give us an idea into some of the movies you've you've written about. Ooh, movies. Okay, so I was with a, a production company called Inkblot Productions, who've gone on some fantastic things, and so I worked on some movies like. Where no, but party? I didn't really work on it, to be fair. I just used it to fans. <laughs> um, but there was the arbitration that made it to the Toronto International Film Festival. Fantastic so work. there's, you know, out of luck. Some of those smaller films that mm. we were really, really proud of, yeah. Well yeah, done. Thank you. All right, so, you know, let's actually go into the meat of today's conversation. We're looking at single on Valentine's Day, and I think mm. it's a very important conversation because on Val's Day, you're seeing everybody putting proclamations of love on social media about their partners, and we don't get to always see it from the angle of the single people. Comedians right. make jokes about people being single on right. Val's Day, and it's like, you know, it's a breeze. I'm going to tell you, you're a single woman yes. yourself. Yes, so let's look holistically at yeah. what it feels like to be single on Valentine's Day. And honestly, too. <laughs> All right. So honestly, every Valentine's Day is different because there's Valentine's Day when you're like 21 and it's really hot. All your friends are dating people and everything is happening at the same time. And so if you're single in that time, then you feel left out. So it's not so much because you're feeling like your life is going to be over. It's more because of the peer pressure of all my friends have activity and I am not there. So that's one stage. But when you're now like 31, now you are more mature, you've probably sorted out work and business and career, so it's not like, oh, look for your purpose. You are in your purpose, you are set so there's no issue. So then you, you have those moments of, if I was able to have, to figure out all the other parts of my life, how come I haven't been able to figure out this part of my life? And this is for people who want to be um, in committed relationships, of course. Um, and I guess, it, for me, it makes me more reflective. But one thing I have noticed in the past couple of years is that I'm, I only feel bad from like 7 p.m. on the 13th to like 5 a.m. on the 15th. So I just skip the day. Literally, that's my thing. Skip the day, stay off social media. If you're around friends, you'll be like, oh my God, just, just chill. Put your phone on silent for one day, it's okay. Nothing's gonna, nothing will fall apart, but that's like the practical thing. So you can say, oh no, don't worry. It's pinning you, it's fine. But don't put yourself in the middle of where you will then be bombarded with all these love messages. It is destructive to your mental health. So for me, I would say keep your distance from the avalanche of love messages, especially if you're feeling particularly raw, if you've just come out of a relationship, if somebody you like is not liking you, like stay away from the things that will aggravate it. But if you're feeling like you're in a healthy place in your life, then just be reflective, just be happy, see if you can show love to other people in different ways. That's if you're like, you know, there's when it's paining you, then there's when you're feeling strong. Then you can show love to other people. You can reach out to your friends. You can hang out with your friends. You can do all those kinds of things. But, yeah, those are the different. Okay, so looking at you right now, you're a very beautiful person, oh, by the way. Oh, thank yes, you. Yes, I actually <laughs> have to say that. Thank you. Now, thank you. Um, why didn't you just take the option of, I'm pretty sure you have toasters and myras. We thought that's nice. We have for that, <laughs> you know. And yeah. why didn't you just decide to pick somebody? Because I have friends mm. then who in school. They'll be like, oh, I don't like the guy. No, I won't mm, date him. Mm. But let's just go on but a date so everybody out. will know I have a Valentine right. date. So mm. why didn't you just do that? Well, uh, I can address this in two ways. For me personally, I used to always say to my friends that I didn't understand the whole thing about everybody liking yellow skin because it never got me many toasters. It's literally, I literally be sitting down like, someone's like, I'm sure your phone is always ringing. I'm like... You can call me so that the phone will ring. <laughs> oh, um, so I actually did have that kind of strange, like, people are like, I'm sure you're the one that's pushing them around. Perhaps. But it means that I don't have, I'm not bombarded. But that also keeps my sanity. Because I talk to some people who are like, ah, I don't know who to choose. I don't really like this one, but let me just date. I don't have that temptation because there's no, there are no hundred people trying to mm. be in my space. I think what I do is I block you from a distance so it doesn't get to the point where I am grappling with. Somebody said, let me take you to dinner. Somebody said, oh, I don't know who to choose, so I don't have that. But I think for people who just go out 
I don't know if I'm allowed to say this just because of the people who are probably watching this, but if loneliness on the day is what you're trying to deal with and somebody is asking you and you know you're not going to end up compromising your own values, it's food. Go and eat. It's fine. There's no crime. Go and eat the food. Um, but when it comes to extorting or exploiting people or mm -hmm. pretending that you want to be in a relationship because you know that you just want to post on Instagram, that's when you shouldn't cross that line. But if, like, your friend says, let's go out, or it's somebody who is saying, well, we're friends, I don't really know if I want a relationship yet, but you know what, let's hang out and see how it's going. If that will make you kind of get through the Valentine's Day blues, feel free. But don't let it become a lifestyle where you're trying to assess, ah, you know, this singleness, I'm tired, let me just settle. Don't settle. And don't manipulate people, because, you know, many women have been accused of manipulating. I want to tell you, you're yeah. very very open mm. about you know your single your work as a single girl yes. and unfortunately we're we live in a society that shames women mm. for being vulnerable about wanting to be married so mm. it's okay to want a job it's okay to want money yes. but it's all, all of a sudden not okay to want a husband yes. because oh, you are desperate if you yes. say you want a husband how are you able to amidst all of this be your most natural and vulnerable self. I mean, I saw mm. your post on Instagram, your last post, yes. about you know how you felt on Valentine's yes. Day, and I thought it was so, so apt, because yes. many young women can relate to that. that. So yes. in a society that shames women from expressing yes. that they need to want to get married, yes. how are you able to still maintain your vulnerability? Um, I think I developed a vulnerability. I wasn't always vulnerable. And um, I am over 30, so I've had the years of forming, fronting, pretending, oh, I don't need a man. I've had those years. And the thing I always say is that if you organically got married at 22, if you organically got married at even 27, it's fine. But if, for instance, if you are a woman who slays all her goals, career, check, house, check, whatever, check, and you actually desire to be married and you are not married, it means that some, check, just, it's, it's just something to assess. For instance, if you had a job and you were trying to get that promotion, there is a single-minded focus that you have to saying, I'm going to address this but that only comes when you are over a certain age because the truth is when you're younger it's not a big deal mm -hmm. just wait until it's the right time when you now start getting older and you feel personally because it's a personal work for someone they feel like it's late when they're 30 somebody else is until they're 35 before they feel like it's late but if you feel personally that okay do you know what i'm slaying all these other goals in my life why isn't this happening especially because i want it if you don't want it this is not the same conversation then you can start being more reflective and you can start to assess how, how, why are you here. And then the thing is, it's not supposed to get you to a place where you start beating yourself up because the truth is there's nothing wrong with anybody. There's nothing wrong with getting married late. There's actually nothing wrong with it. But the thing is, for me, I found that I wanted to be married, but I didn't know anything about being married beyond m and romance novel. You know, do you know what I mean? I didn't know the practical things about being married. So I started mm -hmm. to watch people who were married. The two-year married friends, 10-year people, my parents, my relatives. I started to watch everyone. And I slowly started to realize that there was a pattern. At some point, they'll say they love each other. At some point, they'll say it's hard. At some point, they'll say, enjoy yourself while you're single because it's hard. And I was like, why? Why are all these things happening? And why does it cut across, whether it is 10 years or 50 years? My mom will still be like, sorry, your dad, this thing that he just did. It's the same thing that my friend who is who's married for two years would say. So what are the real issues? Because then if I can deal with those issues even while I'm single, then I can start working on it. So the same way, okay, I'm trying to slay these my career goals. Let me try to become a better person mm -hmm. so that whether or not the marriage comes, I will be prepared. And I will not just end up in this marriage and be like, oh my God, I thought you were going to be my knight in shining armor. Now you need my help. Like there are a lot of rude surprises that people say when they get into marriage. But if you've been studying marriage to some degree beforehand, then you're not surprised. And what I found out in the end with marriage is that being a better person makes you a better spouse. So be a better person in your office, be kinder to your colleagues, be kinder to your siblings. And it's hard to be kind to your siblings when you want to be rude. It's hard to be kind to your subordinates yeah. at work. It's hard. And then you think you're going to get married and all of a sudden it's going to be easy. It's going to be hard for you to deal with that mother-in-law. It's going to be hard for you to deal with this new sister, this new brother that you now have to call brother, sister. But you don't respect your brother at home. So why do you think it's going to be easy? So me, I've realized I mean by myself, I have work to be done on me. <laughs> And so that's allowing me to kind of deal, really, in okay. a practical way. Well, mm -hmm. my mom would actually say that marriage doesn't have issues. Mm. It's the parties in the marriage yes, exactly. who bring in their personal issues exactly. into it that actually have issues. But this question actually mm. has been in my heart. 
What's up with people who say, okay, you know what? I have everything working for me, yeah. but I just keep attracting people I don't want. I think Sharon yeah. mentioned something like that when she was here. Oh, wow. Yeah, she mentioned something like that, Sharon, mm. on stage, that, you know, on, on the set. But so, right. yeah, maybe, maybe you should answer that before I ask you my final question. Um, I think, ooh, how do I say this? You, you, at, you don't attract who you pretend to be. You attract who you really, really are. So you look on social media and everybody's filtered. So you don't, so nobody knows the issues that you have. But when you're in a romantic relationship or a deep relationship of any sort, you are going to attract the person who sees who you really are. And if you've come from dysfunction, you're used to your aunt was divorced, single parent homes, all kinds of things in, um, affect it, abuse affects it, um, bad boyfriend, bad ex, so you have low expectations. No matter how much you filter the outside, you will attract that because that's what you are used to. It's only when you start to change, work on yourself and start to change your perspective and say, do you know what? I don't expect all men to cheat. I expect, because you find that people who are saying they're attracting bad people, they're probably the same people who say, oh, men are useless, Joe. You're going to attract a useless man. So at the end of the day, it's your mindset. You need to look within, find out what the issue is yes. and fix it from the inside. Yes. Before I let you go, yes. Omotayo, how, what would you say to somebody who is single right now, lonely and mm. thinking, I really want to be married. I really right. want to have someone to call my own. And just in case you're watching, it's not a crime to want a partner. Right. Just as you want a good job, yeah. as you want, you know, yes. other goals. You can want a partner. Yep. And it does get lonely sometimes. Yeah. So how would you say you've been able to handle it yourself? So what, what tips would you give to some other single lady or guy watching? Yeah. Honestly, I realize that I'm a lot of work. I am, I myself personally, I'm a lot of work. So the time that I spend taking care, figuring out my own issues, admitting that, yes, sometimes I have a bad attitude. And some, the time I'm spending studying myself and fixing myself is occupying me so much. And so when I have those straight thoughts, of, oh, gosh, like, oh, it's Val's day, um, I remind myself that I could either be dealing with this issue, fighting with somebody right now, or I could be getting, becoming a better person. And I distract myself because it's not like well, it zaps the thoughts away, but it, it, it allows you to realize that you're not a bad person, you're working on yourself, and it'll, it'll come. Welcome. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining You're us, welcome. Omotayo. Thank you for having me. Now, you do Thank these you. lectures from time to time on Instagram. The Instagram live chats, yes. Yes. How can people follow you? So she does this lecture called How to be Single. How to be Single, yes. How do people follow you on social media? All right. So I am omotayo.a on Instagram. And occasionally, I would do an Instagram live chat. And there is the How to be Single series, which I really love. We end up talking about life. Because really, how to be a whole person is having a whole healthy life. You have to be a full, complete person. You are not a single part of a broom that is wasted. You are like mm. a whole fruit. You have everything you need in you to be complete. And that's pretty much what I talk about, yeah? Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. This has been a really you. interesting yeah. chat. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.